Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Vault Hunters. This time we're on update 12. With update 12 come a few different changes. We have a quest that we can complete for level 40, which gets us four echo gems, two mod boxes, an orange and 12 bamboo. And I think the 12 bamboo is a hint to place it in the vault because that gives you a secret transmog. Also, let's read about the gods. Got a battle, got knowledge, life and time. After level 40, you can find charms rarely inside living chests. They cannot be crafted. Is your way to show your affinity to a specific god while inside a vault. They can be identified by rolling them like gear, and there are four different tiers of charms, noble, distinguished, regal, and majestic. The higher the tier, the more affinity they can have to their god. They have uses and cannot be unequipped or equipped during a vault. A use charge is consumed every time you interact with a god altar inside a vault. Affinity is important to understand for your next quest, so here's your first charm identified and wear it proudly. Okay, and complete. So now we need to go and complete a god altar again. I have two mod boxes. Ooh, is that a better energy cell? Basic energy cell. Let's put this one down. Awesome. You know what we can do? We can, I think, chain them probably. This is still charging. This is doing its thing. Yeah, 40 million FE, uh, so many. Okay, cool. We can put this rod here, and that should be fine. And this should charge up with this and this. Awesome. Let's see what the thingy is. Oh, we got a Noble Tenos charm. Okay, so this now goes into the charm slot here on the top. We can put it on, and now we get 7% Tenos affinity and 20 uses. Awesome. These 12 bamboo... I have done that in a vault off camera with one of my patrons and it gives you a transmog, I believe for the sword, it is the bamboo sword. It looks like this. I am bamboo Fiki. Bam, 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 bamboo. <laughs> All right. Oh, the charm floats. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, that's so neat. Oh, I love that animation. That's so cool. Let's address the elephant in the room, shall we? Our armor that we have now acquired which is backup armor that we had that I wasn't using, and it's all kind of le around level 50-ish, so that is pretty cool. We have a legendary block chance on our shield with 90% block chance, so we have a whole bunch of block chance basically, and 5% more resistance, and it has more durability. I think that is definitely fine. It's also soulbound, so it's pretty good. We also have the Vault Boots, which have 18 and a half ability power. They are Soulbound. 16 armor, which I think is the highest roll you can get at this level. We have 19% more mana, 6 armor, 3% cooldown reduction, and 41% mana regen. On the pants, we have 29% soul chance, which is really, really high. We have 10% healing efficiency, 4 armor, and it's also Soulbound, 20 ability power, and 15 armor on the implicit. The chest plate has 11 armor, 8 health. 17 and a half ability power, 7% knockback resistance, 33% mana regen, and 25% soul chance. The helmet has a legendary suffix, which is the 84% poison avoidance. It also has 23% healing efficiency, 3 armor, 12 increased attack damage, 21.5 ability power, and 16 armor on the implicit. As far as the sword is concerned, I'm gonna run with our sweeping hit chance sword that we got a couple episodes ago. It has 22 attack damage, 60% sweeping hit chance, 30% soul chance, and 13% faster attack speed. So let's talk about our tools. I have given myself a brand new melded sickle, and I will give myself a pickaxe, axe, or shovel, depending on what jewels I wanna put on. And jewels have changed. The ones that I have in my system, are kind of the old type of jewel. You can see that now it says it has 10 to 35 size and the jewels can now be cut differently. So the expertise for jewel cutting that we do have is now one cut, two cuts and three cuts. So you can cut jewels without affecting their grade. So now what we can do is we can toss in a jewel if we craft a new one right here. This is 24 size copiously. We can toss it here, spend one gold and a bit of silver scrap. I think it's five scrap and one gold. And we can cut it once, twice, and that's it. Now, if we cut it again, I think it should break. And I'm not gonna break this one because it's a really good copiously jewel. But if we craft another one, for example, this has shoveling and vanilla immortality. And we can again 
go in here. One, two, and it cannot be cut lower than size 10. So we can basically lower really low jewels to a really low size, meaning we can put more and more things on our tools. I have put enough stuff in here to craft a stack of jewels. So I'm just gonna go through them and put them in a chest and see what we can get. And maybe we can make some new better tools. You can fit so many more jewels onto the tools because the cutting system is so much better. And I could even cut them more if I had the expertise maxed out on the jeweler. But we're gonna do that at level 60, definitely, because that is super worth it. And at level 65, we're gonna get new tools anyway, so we can make new jewels and make more stuff, and it's just gonna be better anyway. But on this one, I have all of the affinities. I have 9.9% .9 item rarity, extra 1.3k durability, 8% item quantity, and I went more for trap disarm chance on this because that is really cool. You get more stuff if the chest isn't trapped anyway, so having more item quantity and item rarity doesn't matter if the chest was trapped. So having more trap disarm, I think, is better. So we're gonna go with that for the sickle. As far as the Paxel is concerned, we have axing and shoveling both on size 10, and then everything else is copiously, plus a few things that have just been added with it. I have 7% trap disarm from one of the copiously jewels and a smelting from one of the copiously jewels, and it's a really good one. It is a 2.9% copiously, which is almost the max, and smelting, and it's 10 size. So I sadly can't remove the smelting, I wonder what's it gonna do to the vault stone that I mine inside the vault. Maybe it's gonna make it into polished vault stone. I think it should be fine, but that is gonna be our Paxel. There we go. In the overworld, we're still using our chromatic steel Paxel, which is currently at 50% vanilla immortality, so it is breaking half as slow, but it is breaking nonetheless. And now that we can have better tools, I'm gonna make this. It still has 198 capacity left, and I have no idea what I wanna put on it, but it already has 100% vanilla mortality, so I'm assuming it's unbreakable, and it has shoveling, picking, axing, and basically it's just a Paxel. So I'm gonna do that, and we can add more jewels, maybe reach, maybe mining speed, but I think this already with our haste is gonna be insta-break. Oh, it's not insta-break. Oh, because it's not enchanted with efficiency. Hold on. Efficiency and breaking suck touch, but it doesn't take durability. Yeah, this is insta break, so we don't need anything faster than this with mining speed. Okay. Sudo was kind enough to invite me into a living vault that he has customly created, so here are a few highlights from that. Okay. Okay, are we ready? We have 17 minutes, so that's plenty. Yeah, I'll go to the far uh, far living room. Okay, is it just gonna be in a straight line? Uh, it, it, it wraps around it like a spiral, if I recall correctly. Okay. Hey, wild mobs. Ow, ow, ow. Ooh, the mobs are hurting me quite a bit. And they're quite tanky. Is this like your level crystal, or what level is it? Yeah, I forgot to put, uh, put on some pearls, so, uh... Let me help you take care of some of these mobs. Yeah, you can try and tackle all the mobs and I'll go looting, pretty much. Ooh. Well, I am downstairs. Lots of mobs. Lots of mobs. Right, cool. Coming in. Lots of mobs running around, running around, running around. There's so many living chests. Right, they're on me. Okay. Because I don't have chaining and I ha don't have as much health uh, as I, I had I before. The, I, I use Sweeping Edge in my, uh... Do wild mobs keep spawning, or...? Yeah, they, I think they spawn in sets, so since there's two, they spawn in, like, two sets. Okay, and then we should be good, right? Oh, there was a mob trap. That's fine. I pillared up. I'm okay. Awesome.
Oop. I got 489 knowledge. Out of that vault that we ran with Pseudo, we got enough to make 10 more knowledge stars, which would bring us up to 14. And I'm actually just gonna craft the one that I have the core for, that I have made, so we can do that. And the rest we can craft whenever we need to unlock another mod. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna craft 44 burgers. And we're just gonna chomp and see how far this gets us. 56. 57. That was basically two levels. Awesome. I was thinking what we can do with all that knowledge that we got, and I'm not really saving for any specific mod, but vaults are gonna slowly but surely get harder, which means that we should probably unlock a better potion. Which means that we can now make the Slaughterer's Mixture. If it will let me craft it? What? It's not letting, letting me craft it. Hello? Oh, <laughs> I possibly should research <laughs> the thing. <laughs> Okay, now I can craft it. Okay, that was a derp moment. Anyway, we can now add, I believe, two modifiers onto this. We're definitely gonna do 120 mana. That, I believe, is a good thing. Awesome. And I think we can do another one. Do you want, do we want regen? I don't know if you can have only one thing on the thing. I don't know that I wanna test, but I think it says... Okay, I'm assuming you can only have one modifier on the potion because... It says Vault Potions are upgraded vials, and they can hold one modifier. And then it says the effect of the modifier is enhanced, and even here it says the effect of its modifier is even further increased. So I'm assuming you can only have one thing on the thing. So it heals the health, and then it can do either mana, speed, regen, or whatever. So we're gonna stick with the mana, and I think it should be fine. You do a whole bunch of eating in the Vault, and that takes time. And we could save that time by unlocking auto-feeding for seven research, and I think that's worth it. We have seven left over, so we're just gonna unlock that. Boom. And we can now make the feeding upgrade, and I don't know if we should make the advanced one. It's only two vault diamonds. I don't know if there's any difference. More options for when food gets fed to player. Ah, okay, so we can feed l sooner or later, depending on... Yeah, we'll do the advanced. That's fine. And I think it's fine to put it on this backpack, which has the most room. I'm assuming, because this one wants to, yeah, yeah, we'll put it on this one. And what I will do is I have Vault Suites in here, in this backpack. We're gonna remove these guys and we're gonna take some Vault Suites and we're gonna put them in this backpack. And we're gonna say, select all slots, save settings to slot two. And what is going to be cool about this, it's just going to accumulate a bunch of sweets in here for over time. And we can remove the stack upgrade and put in the advanced feeding. And then we can say, use these. And only feed when player is hungry enough to only waste half hunger points for the most. Most players health and only feeds based on hunger setting. Yeah, I don't think we should do anything on hearts because you don't regenerate hearts in the vaults. So I think that should be fine. And I think we can do that. That's one and a half hunger haunches. We'll, we'll see. I'll set it on this. I think it should be fine. And we'll see how it works. And I think it's now time to just go run this basic vault and see what we can find. I just remembered we still have the bounty to kill an Elder Guardian mob in the overworld. So I'm going to quickly go do that. I have my vault gear on, so I should be a little bit more survivable. And we can go to the Ocean Monument. I have aqua affinity and everything. And I think we can just, before we get mining fatigue, drop down in one of these corners here. Break in real fast. And there should be an elder guardian. Or did somebody kill him? Maybe somebody killed him. Because there should be a guardian here. Oh, I did still get the mining fatigue. Oh no, here he is. Hello. There we go, that's our bounty. There we go, bounty complete. I will take this bounty, which is just to kill horde mobs. And we have one to kill assassin mobs, which gets us an echo gem as well. And this one just gives us some black chromatic, chromatic steel, vault ingots, an infused vault catalyst, and that's pretty much it. I bought the Idonis pendant off of Pseudo for 32 vault gold, I believe. 
And this increases my soul chance by 100% of my total soul chance. So my soul chance is 84% and this makes it 168%. So I should get a whole bunch more soul shards in this vault. And this does increase the cost of my death quite significantly. It's gonna cost me 61 vault gold because it's 14 gold for the pendant and 14 gold for the treasure goggles. But it is what it is. It's expensive. I have not died yet. So we'll see how this gear will fare. Before we actually enter though, we have four skill points and I can take an ability of some kind. I think I can try Nova, right? It only costs me one and I think I wanna go Frost Nova. It's still the same cooldown, the same mana cost. The radius is the same and the mobs will get frozen for a duration of the time and then get hypothermia causing them to be permanently slowed and take damage every three seconds. We could also do Poison Nova, but I think the Frost one should be better. I don't know, it doesn't say how much damage it does. Oh, it just makes the Nova freeze the mobs. So you don't do the damage. This Nova does damage based on your ability power. Okay. I'll do four points. I'll run a vault with the regular Nova because it currently does 90% of my ability power damage and we will see how that is gonna work. And the Nova I need to bind to a key. There's our Nova. We can cast it every 20 seconds and it's gonna do a damage around us. And I think that should be good. You know what? I'm just gonna take the Frost Nova because I think it's gonna be more useful if I'm surrounded by a ton of mobs and they just freeze and start taking damage after a while. And what we can then do is we can just use the Choice Flask to remove the specialization of Nova and that should be fine. Let's do Frost Nova, there we go. And let's uh, go, I think we're good. I always get scavs. <laughs> so at least it's not a particularly difficult scav. It does require living and gilded and ores and coin piles, but we have treasure goggles, so that should help. And all of the items are just the common ones, which should be okay. Plus we have 27 and a half minutes. And I think we're good to go. Again, always mess up the first dash. That is totally necessary. I feel like the chaining was so much better. Okay, that's all the coins. Two blood vials. Oh, there's an altar. The altars are now different. I'm gonna spawn in the mobs here. Oh, hello, champ. Hi, champ. Can I frozen Nova you? Ow, ow, ow. Stuck in a corner. All right, got the champ. So this altar doesn't, I don't know what it's gonna be. I think it doesn't show you. <sighs> More mob traps. I have so much trap disarm. Ow. Get nova -ed. The Nova is super nice. I like the frozen Nova already. So basically the way these god altars work is you right click them and then it gives you a challenge in a, in a certain amount of time to complete it. Kill dungeon mobs, 10 minutes. So I have to find a dungeon. That's so unrealistic. I have 10 minutes. And if not, I'm gonna get a curse on my vault. Okay, we gotta find a dungeon now apparently in the next 10 minutes. Yeah, I think I'm not completing that uh, that altar thing, so that is what it is. One red scroll, S at least something. Who and ornates. The, the key that I bound Nova on is very close to my backpack key. So I'm opening the backpack as I do this. Die, Archer. Thank you. Okay, ooh, and a champion. The creepers are just gonna blow me up, aren't they not? Yep, there's one creeper explosion. I'm gonna try and get the creeper, there we go. Like the chaining by this time would have killed all the mobs on the side and the sweeping just does nothing. Okay, I do think I need to kill these horde mobs though. Oh, these are not horde mobs. It says husk tier one. 
Okay, it is counting. It's just not counting specifically. Gotcha. I've spent over 10 minutes in two rooms. And that was it. <laughs> Vaults are significantly harder. I think I might... Oh, yeah. There we go. Mobs and... Of course. <laughs> well, now I don't get any more soul shards in the vault. Is it even worth it to go loot? I guess it is. But no more soul shards. Even though I'm wearing my super soul shard thing. Now. See? Now I find a dungeon. And it's extreme. I do have completed a quest though. It's like the game knows. It gives me a dungeon right after the curse falls. So. Is this one with... Corridors? It is one with corridors. Okay. And it's extreme diff- Oh, it's living. Okay. Hello? Do you want to spawn me the mobs? There we go. I think I'm gonna do this dungeon. And then we're good. And then we can leave. And hopefully we don't die. And I'm just noticing I don't have the one probe now that we have updated the server. Yep, there are more mobs. Yeah, defeating these without cheesing them, it's just insane. It just can't be done. At least not with my gear and my abilities. I'm just gonna block this off just in case they can open doors, and I think that's it. Yep, they can open doors. Okay, nothing there. A door here. That was that one was probably still from the same spawner that spawned the rest of them. I think that's good. Hi guys. I'm totally fine with just spending all my time right here killing all these mobs, looting, looting all the wooden chests or the living chests even. And I think I'm good. You can just see how sweeping is so much worse. Chaining is just so much better and especially the four chaining that I had on my sword. A cool way to not die in the dungeon is to just do this. We'll block this off. I think we're good here. There's not that many chests in here. Hello? Block this off. There's probably a spawner somewhere there. Yep. Oh, and there's a spawner here. I think this is a good, a good solution to come here. Yep. There's a champion. Okay, where's the baby? Hello. Oh, maybe that's why they're taking so long to kill, because the baby has resistance or something. Got a magnet. Alrighty. Is there another spawner somewhere back here? I don't think there is. I think we might be okay. And there's no modifier thing right here. There might be in the main room right here. So what we'll do is we will do this. Come in. Hi, champ. Oh, you're super tough. Well, this will be me for the next two minutes. Nice. A shield. I think that's it for this room, right? Hopefully. There's so much living chests, and they all have so much loot. And I'm also going to be grabbing the Gilded Blackstone that's here in the corner. That is sometimes in some bounties. And I think we're good. I think though there's no modifier table bench doohickey that I can see. We have 2 minutes and 40 seconds left in the vault. And I think we're good. Ooh, more livings. Haha. Alrighty. I think we're, we're done, so... Oh, do we greed? Okay, it's just just the husks. That's easy enough. Even though there's babies. Hi, babies. Hi, babies. Thank you. All right. It's time we leave. Unsuccessful scav, but very successful living dungeon thing. I only got through like three rooms. 
which means that we definitely need to look at making the skill altar and turning my build into possibly something that does more damage to mobs rather than being just a loot oriented build. We got 371 knowledge out of that vault. Another five knowledge stars. <laughs> Uh, and I think we were pretty much out of Knowledge Essence when we entered that vault. So that's uh, five extra Knowledge Essence just from one single vault. That's insane. I can make another 20 pickle burgers, the salty deluxe cheeseburgers. So I'm going to just eat as many as I can. Maybe we get another level or two. Definitely one. And probably not a second one. Close, though. At least we get a whole bunch of soul shards from all of the bits that we got from the scav. We got a few gear pieces, and let's see if uh, we get anything good. These have more ability power and the same amount of armor, so we could try and re-roll them a couple times and maybe there's something good. The chest plate has a little bit more armor, but it has one less suffix. These pants have 30 mana, so we would lose the ability power, but they do have another empty prefix and a whole bunch of cool stuff that we could do. The shield is a thorns damage shield, which are my preferred shields. So I'm thinking we could try and reroll this guy. The magnet is not better. And of course we get a scrappy chaining healing cloud axe. <laughs> I think I might try running this vault axe, which has a whole bunch of attack damage, and since sweeping isn't really doing that much for me, I might just run this one and see how that works. Even though it's just gonna do one person at a time, basically, and it's gonna be very, very slow, but it should be better in terms of attack damage. And we completed the Horde Mobs bounty. We were close on the Assassins, but that's okay. I rerolled the shield quite a bit. I even invested some fundamental foci, which are very expensive. They're a pog each and eight nullifying foci, which each one of this is nine amplifying and this one is nine wild. So that is uh, a little bit expensive on what I tossed on it, but I think it's fine. We got 24% block chance. I crafted on some thorns damage, which got 17 and a half. We have more soul chance and a bit more durability, which I think is good. They fixed how the Snow Wolf helmets render on your head, and they render above the eyes now, instead of right in the middle of them. So we could be a cool Snow Wolf and have our Wolfie on our side. I think that looks pretty cool. I think I like the black set better. Even though we don't have the boots for it, we can ask maybe somebody else if they have the transmog, and they can transmog it for us. But uh, we can run with the Black Wolf. I think that looks better. We also completed a dungeon quest over here and a god altar quest. We didn't complete a god altar, but apparently it gave us the quest anyway. I guess it counts for you to, in, to not complete it when you do the thing. Divine Paradox. Neither do you know a bit about the gods and understand their altars. It's time to let you know about the Divine Paradox. Is a vault designed completely by you. It can be revisited once every day and can be customized to fully suit your needs. In order to get started, you will need a seal of the creator and apply it to a crystal. This will grant you access to the build realm of the Divine Paradox, letting you buy rooms for vault gold to extend your vault. Each room is associated with a god and will require you to have the sufficient reputation with that god to build. Every time you add a room of any god, the reputation requirement from that god goes up. The build realm of the Divine Paradox is empty in terms of loot and mobs. It exists solely for you to design and extend it. You can enter it any time you can craft a crystal and seal it with the seal of the creator. So let's start with the seal of a creator. That does require a pog. We did get two from the quest, so we're going to make one of those. And then we need a crystal. Not too difficult. We can apply it here. Okay. Once you have built a few rooms in your Divine Paradox, it's time to run the vault. You can do this once only every 20 hours, and since the Divine Paradox is a personal vault, you cannot bring your friends. Starts out with 10 minutes on the timer as opposed to the 25. Relics and extended modifiers can increase the time. The goal of running your Divine Paradox is to collect blessings from each god. They appear in chests, coin piles, and ores in a room blessed by the corresponding god. Collect the required amount and return to your start room to sacrifice them to the correct god to complete the Divine Paradox. This will be difficult in the beginning, as you may not have enough rooms of each god to complete the vault. However, as you extend your Divine Paradox, it becomes easier and easier to complete. 
and completing it is good because the gods will always bless you with an artifact. Once you have built a few rooms, in the build realm of the Divine Paradox, craft a seal of the Ordinator and attach it to a crystal in order to gain access to running the Divine Paradox. This requires another seal of the Creator and another seal of the Ordinator. There we go. I think we can just go into this and see what happens. I'm gonna leave this guy over here and I'll bring in my Vault Gear. I think nothing bad should happen in here, so I don't think we need to bring the trinkets inside so we don't waste uses on them. I think we're okay. We can just bring the Idona Affinity, which has the 10% affinity, and see what happens. Okay, good luck. Okay, Dragon Room. Oh, I should have brought gold. One Vendor Reputation 62 Vault Gold. I don't know, I, I'm assuming I can exit anytime. I should have brought gold. One Valara. I totally forgot to bring gold. One Valara. And one Tenos. So I do have the Tenos reputation thingy. Oh, don't eat my shield, please. <laughs> Sorry, it's weird how these things can eat your things. Okay, so I'm currently running the... The Idona affinity. I don't understand this. Okay, let me see if what happens when I exit. Do I just lose the thing? Or do I get the crystal back? I don't get the crystal back. Okay. So I need to bring gold and affinities. So basically, what I need to do is I need to complete god altars to gain favor, and then I can start building the thing. So in terms, I just wasted a crystal and a seal. At least it was just the seal, which it is a pog. It's okay, but we get we'll do that later. <laughs> so that wasn't really anything special. Since we're in need of a sword, I want to craft some swords. Let's do four for now and see what they are. All I think scrappy. Oh, a common one has high attack damage. I'm gonna craft some more and see if I can get anything good. This is a really good one. I might try rerolling the implicits. It has four chaining and poison cloud two, which means that if we get a higher attack damage on the reroll, because it's rolled the lowest attack damage, I think this could be a really good sword. One more. 17, seriously. 23 and a half, I will take that. That was more than we had before. And I wanna see what I can craft on this guy in the modifier workbench. We can do soul chance or specific damage to the different mobs, and that's it. I'll think I'll take the soul chance, because we can do 21 to 30%. Yeah, 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 we'll do that. Soul chance, boom. We now have a sword. Huzzah. We don't need to run the axe. And the rest of these that are scrappy, we can just toss in the forge to reuse. And I think that is going to have to do it for today's episode. So I want to thank you all so much for watching. I am really hoping that you did enjoy it. If you did, make sure to smash the like button. And you can also subscribe to get notified when new videos go live. And you can support me on Patreon as well if you want. And I will see you all in the next episode. Have a good one. Bye-bye.